Yes, welcome to the show. We've got my next guest, and I'd like to uh, welcome on uh, the show Scott Sharp. Very uh, good morning to you. Good morning, <laughs> and uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, chat to us here on the uh, on the XLR uh, morning show. Uh, now, now, um, for those who don't know, you you are a country singer. Is that is that uh, is that fair enough? Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, I've I've been working on country music uh, for years. Yep. Uh, I actually, you know, play a few different genres. Uh, I write. I, I'm really a, a songwriter. Sure. And so you you do a bit of uh, singing as well. So you're a singer songwriter. How many? Uh, yeah, I'm a singer songwriter. Yeah. How many songs are in your catalog? <laughs> uh, recorded uh, ninety eight. <laughs> wow. So t- you, just two more than you've hit the century. Uh, yeah, I think that's my goal in life, you know, is to make a hundred. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get there. And uh, you, you, I've been told you do you do music simply for the passion. You just get you just get the 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 the, the buzz from it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's what I like to do in my spare time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've kind of looked at it as a uh, you know realistically uh, today's music, you know, that's out there. Yeah. You know, when people get into to the music business, you know they've got uh, they've got this idea that they're going to make it rich and famous, mm. and and that that happens to very few people. Sure. And and uh, you know, so if you go into you know you look at it realistically, if it's something that you like to do, you know, pursue that. Yes. But so- don't expect to become rich and famous because yeah. it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it's really a game of chance, isn't it? Really, you try, try if you to make it right at the top, isn't it? Yes, it is <laughs> because you never know what people are going to like or or not like. Yeah, you know, I've got songs that that I thought, yeah, it's okay, and the next thing you know, I put it out there, I'll record it and put it out there, and the next thing I know is, wow, you know, I get a lot of uh, response from it. And people uh, really love it. You got, um... and then there's. There's songs that I think that are really good, and I put it out there, and it's like, eh, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> ah, so you've got you've got quite a following on 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 your fan base, haven't you? Yeah, it, it varies. You know, uh, you know the age group. I mean, is is both young and old, but you know, it's usually older folks that listen to what I write because I think they they understand more what I'm writing about. Mm-hmm. And we're going to move on to your new song, which uh, I've just previewed. It's called The Good Living, Good Loving. Tell us more about that one. Uh, good Living and Good Loving and You is a, uh, it was the first waltz that I ever wrote. You know what? And uh, it's, you know, that was my chance, you know, because I want to, I like to write different genres. And I always wanted to write a waltz. I've written a couple more since then, but, uh, but that was my first waltz that I wrote. And you know you got that one two three one two three, and uh, so that's the style that I was writing in as I was writing the song. Uh, I I listened to the song and it's a good song, you know. I like how uh, one line mirrors the other. It's like opposites really do attract. Exactly, and and that's what I wanted to do, and that's where I think I find my audience is when people listen to those songs, and they can relate to that. You know, because there's a lot of truth in many of my songs, because I talk about what's going on now or what I've what I've done in the past. You know, my my life as it is. You know, it's, it's an observation that I've made. So your music is kind of biographical to you. Yes, in ways. You know, because uh, you know when people write songs like I do, you know, either it's based on you know something that's happened in my life or something that I've I have observed. And that'll trigger me off sometimes, you know, as far as writing, because there'll be times that I will, uh, I will go months without writing anything, mm-hmm. and you know, nothing has triggered me. Uh, it could be something as simple as a a road sign, you know, like eat at Joe's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and next thing I know is I'm writing a song about eating at Joe's, you know, barbecue or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I, am I right in your base in Tennessee? Yeah, I'm, I live in Dunlap, Tennessee. And what I like to say is uh, I'm Dunlap, Tennessee's best-kept secret. <laughs> Why not? And... Because 
And the reason that I say that is because as an independent artist, uh, it's very hard to get airplay on your local FM stations, mm -hmm. you know, FM local, local FM and AM stations. It's very hard to do because you're not with a major label. Mm -hmm. You are somebody that believes in yourself as an independent artist. And so you record what you believe in, you know, and what you think people are going to like. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily going to meet the radio station's criteria. You know, they could be they could be a country station, they could be a rock station. Uh, you know, I do blues, I do rock, I do gospel. Uh, you know, I've got a variety of songs that I do right. And uh, do you enjoy the creativity being an independent artist? Yes, <laughs> but that also gets me into trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason that I say that is. Because with the today, today's society, um, we have people that are easily offended. Oh, yes. And, you know, we don't want to offend everybody, <laughs> but because of some of the songs that I have put out there, they're not politically correct, mm -hmm. and people are not going to agree with them. And I've made some people mad with them, mm -hmm. but I've also made a lot of people laugh yeah. with them because they took the song as what it really stood for. You know, I was having a little bit of fun, poking a little bit of fun, uh, and I'm sorry that I offended people, but as an independent, I get to choose what I'm going to record. And if I was with a major label, they would say, uh, Scott, you can't record that. <laughs> sure. And what do you think of the likes of uh, getting your music um, on CD Baby and Amazon and iTunes? You can just do it yourself now, can't you? Yes, you can You can do that. And, you know, I, for me, it is a learning experience. I've got my music on CD Baby, and I've got I've got seven albums out there. So uh, not not all of them are available on CD Baby. All the songs are available, but the albums are not always available. One of the things that I have learned is the music business has changed as far as sales. Typically nowadays you do not sell cds mm. what we are selling is digital downloads now so the days of this compact disc do you think they are numbered yes yeah. i do think they are numbered in fact what i've changed over in this last year is uh i'm more toward the idea of selling a digital download than an actual cd mm -hmm. you know there's people that still want the, the cds but where an artist will typically sell their CDs is when they're out doing a show mm -hmm. with their band. And that's when you're going to sell, you know, yeah. CDs and T-shirts and things. But as far as the market out there right now, uh, a lot of it is digital downloads. Sure. And I do like the feel of when you open up a CD, you've got the artwork and then you, you, the, the feeling of put it in the CD player and pressing play. But I, I, I'm guessing like in the production of um, manufacturing the CD and the cases, there seems to be more costs overheads in producing that then opposed to the um production of the mp3 where you just put it out there yeah well the mp3 when when you put a song on say like cd baby or anything when when we send that song to them we're sending a wave file which is a high uh sample rate uh you know a lot greater sample rate than an mp3 is so what you're doing is you're sending a file to them you're uploading it to their website, and at the sample rate, I believe, is like 1,040 uh, samples. You know, that's mm -hmm. bytes per second. Whereas a MP3, you know, what we normally listen to, you know, is 320 sure. uh, bits per second. And can you and can you personally tell the difference between, uh, say, uh, a 128 um, MP3? A 128k mp3 um against uh, a wave file Do oh yes there's there's actually a big difference yeah. i mean uh for me uh but you know a lot of people will not listen to the music as close mm. so you got uh, a, i don't think you got a good ear for music then yeah it's 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 fun for me people always ask me you know when i write a song uh, how do i go about it well, I go about it a couple different ways. Um, sometimes if somebody's playing a melody on a, on a guitar or a piano or something, and it might just be a random melody, words start to pop in my head. And I'll start to, you know, start to rhyme a little bit, and I'll come up with an idea. I get a, almost an image in my head. 
And so I'll sit there. Now the, that melody is stuck in my head, so now I've got to create the storyline behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm creating, I'm painting that picture. You know, a lot of my songs will paint a picture for you. If you actually closed, closed your eyes, you know, put on a, a pair of headphones and listen to the, the music, not only just the, the lyrics, but the music in the background, there's a reason that I've done it that way. So it's you know, like, because I want to I want to put that image in your head as you're listening to the song. So that's where uh, being an artist comes in there. You're doing you're doing the the drawing and the painting and the background. You're putting it, you're putting a story together, aren't you? Exactly. And that's that's I think why some of the people can relate to some of my songs. I've got a song called Bayou Banshee which is I took uh you know something that had happened in my life and if People know what the the banshee is. The banshee in like Ireland is the the messenger of death. You're going to hear the the scream of the banshee uh, before somebody dies. And uh, looking at uh, my upbringing and where I've lived in my life, you know, I've been to Texas and Tennessee and Louisiana and different places like that. I took Irish folklore and combined it with with uh, uh, Cajun folklore and came up with a story and uh, put it to music. Wow. Very interesting. Uh, so I want to uh, finish um, one question. And uh, are you a fan of, uh, you probably get asked this so many times, are you a fan of Jack Daniels uh, whiskey made famous from Tennessee? <laughs> I am not much of a drinker. <laughs> um, fair enough. And the, and the reason is, and most people don't know this about me, is. Uh, I'm 57 years old. In uh, 2005, I had a stroke. And when uh, people have strokes, typically they put you on blood thinners. Yes. And uh, if I drank any alcohol while I was on those blood thinners, <laughs> I was a cheap drunk. <laughs> well, we, we, so, yeah. so anyway, but basically what happens when you're on blood thinners is you do not drink alcohol. Sure. Well, we wouldn't want. And to... so it's been many years yeah. that I have not Fair enough. Uh, drink. You know, I never, I never got into drinking that much. Yeah, I was like every other young person. You know, you want to go out and have a party. You want to get drunk. You want to have a good time. But as I've gotten older, that's not a priority in my life. I get high on my music. Yeah, you got to look after yourself and do what's best for you at the end of the day, haven't you? Exactly. Sure. Well, Scott Sharp, thank you very much for sharing all your uh, your music and your journeys and your experiences on here on the morning show with me, Danny. And we're going to play your new song now. We're going to preview your uh, good loving, good, good loving, good loving, and good you. living, good loving, and you. Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, it's perfect. Well, I appreciate I appreciate what you all do, Danny. Uh, you know, it's good to get music, our music out there as independent artists to get our music heard. You know, because without Without the music in the song, you know, if it's not heard, what is it? Well, the pleasure's all ours. We can own. We, can, we, we It's always a pleasure to help out uh, local artists and bands and people who who want who want to get their music out there, but don't have the opportunity or have been given the opportunity to do so. So we're only glad, too glad to do it. Well, uh, you are very much appreciated. <laughs> well, thanks again, Scott Sharp, and have a great day. Thank you too, Danny. Cheers. Thanks a lot.